Praise the Lord Church. This is a new day, a beautiful day God has given us. Amen. This very day is a blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. So, yes, of course, God has many more blessings in this day, but first of all, we need to understand that this very day is a blessing. This is the day that the Lord has made. He made this day for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So he didn't create this day. He so to make something, you need to do something. Amen? Hallelujah. So which means God has done certain things for you and for me, especially, specifically for this particular day. Amen? So let us all rise up to our feet, look to the Lord in prayer, and Lord, whatever your plan to do, I pray that that will be fulfilled. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful day. Lord, we know that this is something which you have made for us. And Lord, we believe and we receive it by faith. We receive it by faith, Father. We know that you have a, a wonderful plan for us. You have a wonderful purpose for us. I pray, Father, that we will fall in alignment to that particular plan and purpose. For which I pray, Father, that if there's anything that is an impediment, if there's anything that's a hurdle, Lord, to, to stop us from getting into that particular track, I pray that, that you will remove it right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will be completely in charge. Whatever you have desired to do, I pray that you would do amongst us. Heavenly Potter, let your will be done. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. I pray that if there's anyone in need, I pray that you would meet them at the point of their need. If there's anyone who, is, who has illness or sickness, I pray that Lord your presence will heal them because you are Jehovah Rapha if there's anyone in any kind of need, you are Jehovah Jireh I pray Father that Lord that you will be more than enough for them speak to us with your word, we love you Lord, we give you all the glory, honor and praise in Jesus name we pray Amen, 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 Hallelujah Hallelujah Amen let this be our prayer this morning draw me close to you. This prayer song is, you know, what we all come together and pray and say, Lord, I want to get closer to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus.
Worship the Lord in the reading of Psalms. Morning, Church. Today's Psalm is Psalm forty six. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the ocean sea. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The, the Lord, Lord of hosts is, is with us. us. The, the God, God of Jacob, Jacob is, our is our refuge. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We have a funny God. Today, as we read this psalm, you know, one of the jokes I have from God. You know, please bear with me. The second verse says, you know, therefore we will not fear, even though the earth is removed, 
and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea. And suddenly, you know, I was prompted. Maybe somebody prayed and the mountain went, was removed and went into the sea. And so don't be afraid. Somebody prayed and they, by faith they prayed that the mountain must be removed. And that's what is happening. And so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. When things are shaky, He is our foundation. Amen. He's a foundation. He's a, he's a ever, you know, foundation forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so verse 10, he says, you know, be still and know that I'm God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Heavens came down and glory filled my soul. It's one of the old songs. Let's all join together and sing. Please understand, heaven is where God is. Heaven is, heaven is not a place. Please understand, heaven is wherever God is and God is amongst us and let us enjoy and experience a wonderful, you know, experience. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. When heaven comes down, glory will fill my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God's love is amazing. It's amazing because He loves the unlovable. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, we read that He loved us and washed us. The Bible doesn't say that He washed us and loved us. He loved me even before He washed me. And so it's an amazing love. Amen. Let's clap our hands and, you know, sing this song. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Makes me sing. sing. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we see in these days, you know, some certain people are in love with somebody. You know, most of the time they are. They are crying. Have you seen, you know, these, these love birds? Most of the time they'll be. They'll be. What happened? In love? But my God, you know, He makes me. Sing, Amen, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your grace is enough, Lord. Amen. His grace is enough. When Paul went through a hard, difficult situation in his life, he went to the Lord and God gave a, a simple reply. He said, My grace is sufficient for you. Church, whatever the circumstance might be, whatever and however bad it, can, it might be, let me promise you, His grace is enough. His grace is enough. Amen, 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 amen. Through that pain, His grace is enough. Through that loneliness, His grace is enough. Through that betrayal, His grace is enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Your grace is enough, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, your children, remember. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can truly say, Lord, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough for me. If not, I won't be standing here in front of you. If not, I may not be even alive. Hallelujah. The grace that sustained me. The grace that led me thus far. The grace will lead me through. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, God is gracious. God is love. God is merciful. At the same time, church, please understand, God is holy. Sadly, today, the church only looks into one aspect of God. God is love. God is gracious. God is merciful. He is compassionate. At the same time, please do not forget, God is holy. He's a consuming fire. Amen. Hallelujah. If anyone should draw near to Him, <coughs> Amen. He expects us to be holy. Amen. We can't see God. We can't have access to God without holiness. And church, let us pray. Lord, let the consuming fire cleanse me. Remove all the dross that is in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Father, have your way with us. If there's anything that is a hindrance, Lord, for that particular thing, I pray, Father, that you would remove it. Holy Spirit, help us to get rid of those things that hinders, Lord, from us getting close to you or from you getting close to us. Let nothing separate us, Lord, as, as Paul says in Romans chapter 8, Father, let nothing, nothing separate us from this love. Help us to come to that place. Continue to minister to us, Lord. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you are a God who speaks. You'll continue to speak to us through your word. We commit ourselves. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us look to, look to the Lord in prayer. Holy Spirit, the one who leads us into all truth, we are independent on your guidance. Without you, Father, without you, Holy Spirit, we cannot know the truth. We will read the word, we will hear the word, but you're the one who will lead us into all the truth. You are the one who is there to, Lord, reveal things. I pray, Father, that your word will become flesh to us, that this word will become meat to us. Give us the mind of the Spirit for us to understand what the Spirit has to say. Hide me and reveal yourself, Lord. I'm just a frail vessel. I'm nothing without your grace. And I pray, Father, that your, you would, Lord, empower me. I pray every word that proceeds from my mouth will be your word and not mine. I pray, I pray that every hearer will receive your word, receive your promise. Let us bring a transformation in their life, a change in their life. We bind the strong men in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. This morning I want to share with you a, a simple word, a simple word. But I believe in and I pray that this will become a great blessing in your life. Amen, hallelujah. It is the most pleasing thing to the Lord. It is the most pleasing thing to the Lord. I've seen this common in many places. People invite guests. Uh, well, this practice is dwindling these days. No more inviting guests, you know, especially to your homes. No more inviting guests home. Well, even if you have a chance to invite, we take them outside, you know, because we don't want to deal with the mess after the meal. Well, there are some people, you know, they like to come home and eat home, eat at our place, and, and uh, so we invite them. So the next thing is we, you, we order food. We get food from outside, saying that, you know, we would like to spend time with the guests. It's good, but slowly things are changing. Man. So, finally, you know, I'm coming, I'm, I'm not talking about those categories who, who don't invite guests or who don't deal with this. I'm talking about the people who invite guests and they cook a meal and they prepare a meal and this is how it is done. They prepare something what they like and give it to the guests. They don't ask the guests what you like. And almost they shove it into them and say, you know, you have to have this. You need to try it. It is good. It is good. This is how, you know, we treat guests. And church Bible talks about something that pleases God. Even today, our Christian life is like this. We say, Lord, Lord, this is the worship. I know you like this song. Because this is the latest music. This is the latest trend. Ehar Rahman, you know, he, he, he composed the same music. And, and Jesus, we want to give you the same kind of music. I hope you like it. Nowadays, if you look, in, look into the worship or so-called worship in the church, there's absolutely no difference between Christian songs and secular songs. 
And so, you know, church, please understand, you know, we are so inclined towards, you know, our carnal likings and we, we thrust it into God and say, Lord, you must like it. I'm sure that you will like it. And the Bible says, you know, these things don't please God. These things don't please God. And church, please, this morning, let us understand. Let us give something or do something that pleases God. And the, and the title of today's message is, this is something, the most, most important thing that pleases God. Amen. Hallelujah. What pleases God? Amen. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, we read, without faith, it is impossible to please God. The most important thing that pleases God is faith. Church, do we have faith to give, to show it to God so that he'll be pleased? And we all know that we are living in the end times and, and something which is expected from the end times. Let us turn to Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. I tell you mm -hmm. that he will avenge them speedily. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes... Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes... Will he really find faith on the earth? Will he really find faith on the earth? Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, we are all living in a time... In a day and age where we are expecting the coming of the Lord, we see all the signs, all the wars and the rumors of wars, all the floods and all those things happening in the world. You know, we say, these are the signs of a second coming. And the Bible talks about when, when he comes, at the time he comes, what is he going to expect? What does he expect from the church? What does he expect from you and me? And the Bible says, will he find faith? Will he find faith? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not hoping and praying that he's expecting. It's not longing and, and crying that he's expecting. Amen. It's simple, you know, faith. He expects faith. What is faith all about? Faith, yes, we, we pray, we hope, we long. Faith is not just crying and weeping. Faith is simple, church. Let us understand. Faith is simply to believe and to speak. That's, that's it. Faith is just to believe and to speak. We pray, and, and, uh, but we don't speak. Sometimes we pray a prayer of faith. And, and after that, when we speak, we say that, you know what? It's not going to happen. For example, we pray for India. Lord, I pray that you will bless India. Lord, uh, you will save India. Then India should be one for Christ. And after, after prayer, we'll say, India will never, nothing, nothing is going to happen. India will be the same. It will go back, you know, in, in, in time. When we speak, we don't speak the words of faith. Faith is simple to believe and to speak. To believe and to speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in the power of our tongue. So church, many a times, you know, we don't utter the words of faith. Faith is simple, to believe in our heart and to speak it in our mouth. Because every time we utter, we, we speak the words, these are the words of our faith. Life and death is the power of our tongue. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Matthew 12, 37. For by your words, you will be justified. Jesus says, by your words, you will be judged. And by your words, you will be condemned. Condemned, amen. So church, please understand, faith is simple. It's to believe and to speak. Believe and to speak. From the beginning, we see that the entire world was created by the word of God. The Bible says, God said, God said, everything was created by the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Everything that, everything that was made was made by the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Then Genesis chapter 1 verse, you know, 3, 6, 9, 11 says, and God said, and God said. That's how it is. And, and everything that was created was created by the word because God believed and he said, and so it became. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you believe this morning, so if you believe and speak, we will activate faith in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith is simple. It is to believe and to speak. Amen. Faith is simple. It is, it, it is to simply believe the word of God and to speak. Let me say it again. Faith is simple. It's to believe and to speak. Faith is simple. It is to believe the word of God, what the word says, and to just 
speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There are a few exam examples of faith in the Bible. This morning, I just want to highlight a few examples, and I pray that these examples will be uh, useful. In fact, you know, I, I really want you to um, practice this in your life. Number one, obvious faith. Obvious faith. Amen. A lot of Christians talk about faith. They say, you know what, I have faith, I have faith in my heart. You know, faith cannot be passive. Faith has to be active. Like love, please understand, love is a feeling. But no one knows, no one can understand love if it's a feeling. It has to be expressed. Passive love is of no use. Love must be active. Love must be active. Let us turn to Acts chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. Acts chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we read about a miracle which took place in Paul's first missionary trip. There's a similar miracle in the Bible in Acts chapter 3 where Peter and John, when they went to the temple, you know, they, say, they saw a lame guy and the lame guy was healed. And, and Luke, when he writes that particular miracle, he gives an entire chapter to that particular miracle. The first miracle in, in the, through the life of the apostles. Amen. Hallelujah. In this verse, again, it's a similar situation where in Paul's first missionary trip, there is another guy who was lame from birth. So coming to this particular guy, we see that he was lame from the beginning, from birth. If you're born in a certain way, if you're born in a certain way, please understand, you know, the person gets accustomed to whatever condition they are born. Sometimes if you're born with one hand, you don't know what is to miss that hand. If you're born with certain things, certain uh, inabilities, you know, you get accustomed to it. Hey, here is a person who was born lame. Born lame. Amen. In John chapter 5, we read about in a place called Bethesda, Jesus goes and meets a person who was uh, invalid for about 38 long years. And Jesus asks a very interesting question. And he asks him, do you want to be made well? Which means, you know what, for 38 long years, he is so used to that condition. You know what, that condition has conditioned him you know, in that state. And so Jesus is asking him a question, do you really want to be made well? Because today I see a lot of people, they get used to their condition, you know, their problem. They, maybe they, they, have, they have asthma, and guess what? Now they are accustomed, they know how to adapt their life towards that. You know, certain, certain, you know, certain people are, are, have a problem in hearing, and, and they have got a hearing aid, and, and they have adapted themselves to that sickness. Some people can't see and they've got some specs and, you know, guess what? You know, they've adapted themselves to that inability. After a while, people get accustomed, get used to it. And here is a person who was born in this condition. Born in this condition. So he doesn't know what is it to walk. He doesn't know what is it to jump. He doesn't know anything about, you know, which he doesn't have. Amen. Hallelujah. And here we see that in his mind there is no expectation. How can you expect something you don't know? How can you expect something you don't know? He doesn't know what is it to walk. You know, yes, of course, he sees others walk, but he has never felt what it is. Amen. And you know what? He's in a place where you have to accept fate. To say, hey, you know what? This is me from the beginning. Maybe it's my fate. Because I see a lot of people, you know, accepting their problem, problematic situation, saying, you know what? This is my fate. This is what is written in my head. You know what? I need to live this life. I need to bear this. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. It's my fate. And you know that already, uh, uh, you know, sick people always have a self low esteem. Generally, sick, sick people have a low self esteem. Now, this guy was lame from the beginning. Amen. These are the days where no wheelchair, you know, the, the, the buildings and, and, the society was not handicap friendly. So he had to crawl all the way. Wherever he goes, he has to crawl. He has to crawl. 
And can you imagine that everyone will be, he, he'll have to look up to everyone, look up to everyone. And there is such, you know, such a low self-esteem in his mind. That was his condition. Amen. No hope, no choice. And then they say in, in English, beggars are no choosers. So this was his life. How can such a person have faith? How can such a person, this morning, a lot of people, you know, give excuse saying, you know what, you don't know, you know, the condition of my life. You don't know the problem I have. You don't know, you know, the pressure I have. And how can you expect faith in me? Here is a person who was in a very bad condition. Nothing was right. He doesn't know what it is to walk. All, all along his life, you know, he's been suppressed. He's been crippled in his mind. Amen. And church, please don't give any excuse for not having faith. And this morning, this, there's a beautiful example for a person in such a condition. For a person in such a condition, amen, hallelujah. There's no way that he can have faith. Let's turn to Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of what God. What happened was, this guy, though, you know, I believe that particular day, he crawled to the meeting of Paul. When others walked in, here is this guy crawling, you know, and, and, and coming and sitting somewhere in the crowd. But as he heard the words of Paul, as he heard, amen, the words, hallelujah, the Bible says in verse 9, he listened to Paul as he was speaking. As he was speaking, as you hear this word, my friend, I want you to receive it. Receive it by faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Church, that's what happened. Yes, he was in an incorrigible situation. He was in a, in a situation where he was, you know, his self-esteem was very low. But still he was listening to the word. He was listening to the word and something happened as he listened. Something happened as he listened. Amen. Hallelujah. He was not confounded to his condition. You know what? His, his mind was not now you know, confounded to his condition. Now he's looking towards the word, what the word says. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts chapter 14 verse 9. Let's read. This man heard Paul speaking. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had Paul, faith. Paul, you know, there's a large crowd sitting and listening to the words of Paul. And when Paul looked at this guy, there was something different. And the Bible says, this something attracted Paul. And the Bible says, Paul looked at him directly or intently. And he saw that he had faith to be healed. In other words, his faith was obvious. His faith was seen all over. Can you, we all know that your anger can be obvious. And when, when you're angry, you know, everyone knows that you're angry, we are upset. Your sadness can be obvious. People are, why are you so sad? You look so sad. Your sadness, yes, these are feelings, right? Your sadness is so obvious. Your hatred is so obvious. Your hatred is so ob obvious. Your love is so obvious. Your love is so obvious. Your eagerness is so obvious. How come you're unable to express your faith? Today, how come, you know, we say, I don't know how to show faith. I don't know, you know, if you can express all these things, if you, if you can show your love, if you can show your anger, if you can show your hatred, if you can show your sadness. My friend, we can show our faith. Amen. That eagerness, that zealousness. And when Paul saw this guy, he was lame. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, you know, he saw the faith in him. He saw the faith. Hallelujah. He had faith to be healed. So it was easy for him to get that miracle. And this morning, that's what we need. We need to have that obvious faith. Amen. Then your faith can be obvious as well. Church, please understand, it was that obvious faith that got him that miracle that day. I wonder, how is your faith this morning? Do we have that obvious faith? And I pray this morning, with the help of the Holy Spirit, that we will have an obvious faith. We have an obvious anger. We have an obvious, you know, hatred. 
But this morning, I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to have an obvious faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Secondly, astonishing faith. Astonishing faith. Let us, let us turn to Luke chapter 7, verse 1 through 10. Luke chapter 7, verse 1 through 10. Now, when he concluded all his sayings in the hearings of the people, mm. he entered Capernaum. He entered Capernaum. Uh -huh. And a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. Mm. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. Mm. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was worthy. Mm -hmm. For he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was already not far from the house, mm -hmm. the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith not even in Israel. Amen. And those who were sent, returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. Amen. Another amazing story about faith. We read the story in Matthew chapter 8 as well. Matthew chapter 8, you know, but Luke gives a, a detailed description about this particular story. And this story took place in a place called Capernaum. First of all, I want you to understand about this place called Capernaum. I mean, Capernaum is the second hometown of Jesus. Second hometown of Jesus. We all know that Jesus belongs to Nazareth. He was also known as Jesus of Nazareth. We all know that. But after, you know, when he started his ministry, he moved from Nazareth to Capernaum. We see this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 13. Let's go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 13. And leaving Nazareth, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum. He came and lived or dwelt in Capernaum. So he shifted from Nazareth to Capernaum. The Bible says, John chapter two verse twelve. Soon after the the first miracle at Cana, making the water into wine, this is what happened. Let's turn to John chapter two verse twelve. After this, he went down to Capernaum. After this, he went down to Capernaum. He he, his mother, his mother, his brothers, his brothers, and his disciples. And his disciples. We all know that, you know, from the wedding, they went back to their town, home, Capernaum. Amen. We also see that many miracles took place in Capernaum. Many miracles. And Jesus said so much so. Uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. Very important words about Capernaum. Matthew 11, 23 and 24. And you, Capernaum. And you, Capernaum. Who are exalted to heaven uh -huh. will be brought down to Hades. Uh -huh. For if the mighty works which were done, if the mighty works that was done to you had been done in Sodom, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this guess day. Guess what? Sodom wouldn't have been destroyed. Jesus is, you know, quoting Capernaum and saying, "So many miracles took place in your place. I feel so many people." Peter's mother-in-law, Peter's house was there in that place. So many miracles took place. And if the miracle that happened to you took place in your place, you know, would have taken in, in Sodom, Sodom would have remained till this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, this was Capernaum. Let's, I want you to read another verse about Capernaum. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Ma Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 6. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, mm -hmm. and his disciples followed him. Mm -hmm. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Amen. When the Sabbath had come. Here is the greatest preacher on earth, you know, waiting for the Sabbath to come to start his ministry because it's his hometown. You know, we all know that a prophet is not accepted in his hometown. 
So when he came to that town, we all know that what happened in that particular passage. We say, hey, we know him. He's a carpenter. You know, his sisters, you know, you know married to our, our sons. We know all his relatives. We know the entire family. How come he has all this wisdom? And the people were so amazed. And this Jesus could only preach when the Sabbath came. Until then, you know what? He was not accepted to preach. He was not accepted as a preacher. Now let's go to verse 6. Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 6. And he marveled. Because and Jesus marveled. Because Jesus was amazed to see what? Of their unbelief. Of their lack of faith. Capernaum is a place where there is no faith. So much so Jesus is surprised. Here, listen carefully. He's in a, you know, this happened in a place called Capernaum, in a place where people didn't have faith. So much so, you know, Jesus is amazed, surprised. Now let us come to this particular story, Luke chapter 7. I mean, here we see that, you know, about this guy. Luke talks about this person, is called, he's a centurion. Obviously, he's a Gentile. He's a Roman citizen. Amen. What do you mean by Roman citizen? An enemy of the Jew. An enemy of the Jew. But this guy was a good person. And the Bible says, you know what? And he even built a synagogue for the Jews. He was friendly with the Jews. Amen. So much so we all know in this particular story that the elders of the Jews, they come and recommend his case. Amen. So he was a person with good reputation. He was kind to a lot of people. We also know in the story that, you know what, he was concerned about his servant. Those Roman, you know, masters, servants, or not servants, they are slaves. They were slaves. And they didn't care for the slave. But this guy was a good guy. He was a loving person. He loved the Jewish people. Even though he was a Gentile, he loved the Jewish people. He has built a synagogue. He was concerned about the sickness of his servant as well. Amen. An amazing person. And not only that, we see that, you know what? The story begins that um, the servant was sick and uh, he sends first set of people to recommend his case. And the first set of people were the Jewish leaders, elders. They come and tell Jesus, Jesus, you need to come. I know he's a Gentile. So they're inviting Jesus to go to a Gentile's house. Listen carefully. Who? The Jewish leaders. Maybe Pharisees. You know, people, you know, uh, the Jewish leaders. They're asking him, please come to this Gentile's house. And that's what, it, the, what they said was in, in verse 4. They said, this man deserves you to come. He's worthy of your visit. And that's the first, you know, that's what the Jewish people said. And Jesus said, okay, I will come. And here is Jesus with the elders. He's going towards the centurion's house. And then, after thought, you know, the centurion says, he sends his friends. His friends, of, of course, obviously, they are Gentile people. He, the Bible says he sends his friends. And this is what he sends word with, with them. And he says, you know what? Go tell Jesus. This is what you need to tell Jesus. Jesus, I don't deserve to receive you. Amen. I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. In fact, I don't even deserve to come and you know, speak to you personally. That's why I'm sending others. I don't see. See, that's the humility he had. That's the humility he had. Amen. And then he goes on saying, you know what? Just say the word. Just say the word, and I know that my servant will be healed. He had so much of belief, faith in the word of God. Okay, how does a miracle take place? Any miracle take place. For any miracle to take place, please understand, this should happen. Power of God should meet our faith. The moment our faith meets the power of God, miracle will take place. Let me say it again. Two things, you know, power of God should meet our faith. The moment our faith meets the power of God, a miracle will take place. In this particular story, here is a need, here is a miracle situation, and that, situ that miracle situation is a servant lying in a sick bed in Centurion's house, you know, maybe outhouse somewhere. And Jesus is coming. In other words, the power of God is coming. The power of, his, power of God is coming to the house. Amen, hallelujah. So what happened was, before the power could come to the house, this person sends his faith. Wow. He sends his faith, and midway, 
the faith meets the power and the servant is healed. Looking at this, Jesus is astonished. In a place, the very same place, he was amazed to see the lack of faith. Here was one person who had an amazing faith. Astonishing faith. Today, a lot of people talk about the environment they live. You don't know the community I live. You don't know the college I live. You know, I study. You know, everyone, all, everyone they're all atheists. They're, they're all against God. How can I be a believer? How can I, you know, you know, profess my faith? And church, please understand, he was living in a place where no one had faith. So much of Jesus is surprised to see. How come there is no faith in this place? Amen. Are you blaming your environment? Are you giving excuse and saying, you know what? You know what? In under my circumstances, it's difficult for me to be a Christian. It's difficult for me to read the Bible. Amen. To, ha to have a good testimony. This person was in a place where you know, Jesus was amazed to see that there's no faith. But this guy had an amazing faith. Astonishing faith. And you know what? That The Bible says that very moment the servant was healed. That very moment the servant was healed. If your faith could Meet the power of God. Today will receive your miracle. Today will receive a miracle. Thirdly, let us look into another example. The third faith is usurping faith. Usurping faith. Amen. Let me put a, a, a simple word. Stealing faith. Stealing faith. Let's turn to Mark chapter 5 verse 24 to 34. Mark chapter 5 verse 24 to 34. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Mm -hmm. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. Mm -hmm. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Mm. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, and tur turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen. Another beautiful incident about faith. In fact, this particular, uh, it's, it's a twin incident. We need to read this, but to understand this particular full story, we need to read from verse 21. Jesus enters this particular town, and uh, uh, a, a synagogue leader, he comes and meets Jesus. His name is Jairus. And uh, the twin story is, there's a 12-year-old girl who was sick, and there was another woman who was sick for 12 years. A 12-year-old girl who was sick, and another woman who was sick for 12 long years. So Jairus invites Jesus, and, and uh, he pleads with them, and Jesus says, yes, I will go to your house. And so a large crowd, the Bible says a large crowd, accompanied Jesus, and they were going towards Jairus' house. Meanwhile, meanwhile, another person who is in that particular town, a woman, the Bible says, we don't know her name. Amen. Hallelujah. A woman, the Bible says. What about a woman? Pharisees pray this kind of a prayer. This is a Pharisaical pray prayer. And the Pharisees pray this way. Lord, I thank you for I was born as a man. I was not born as a dog. Lord, I thank you because I was not born as a Gentile. Lord, I want to thank you because I was not born as a woman. This is seriously the prayer of a Pharisee. A Pharisee prays, you know, Lord, I thank you because I was not born a Gentile, not like a dog, or like a woman. And this is a story about a woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A person who was despised by the society. And she's all by herself. All by herself. And moreover, the Bible, you know, she had an issue. She had an issue. And, and, and the issue was the issue. 
She had an issue of blood, the Bible says. Amen. According to the Levitical law, we read in the book of Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19 to 27. Please go home and read this particular verse. You will see that, you know, a person in her condition is ostracized. She's unclean. She's unclean. You know, all the days she has this problem. And whatever she touches is unclean. The bed she, you know, lies down is unclean. The chair she sits is unclean. The vessel she uses is unclean. Everything is unclean. Anyone who touches her bed is also unclean. Her uncleanness is, you know, is contagious. And can you imagine that, you know what, she had to live this, this kind of a life for 12 long years? And when you read the book of Leviticus, it says, you know what, after she's been, you know, fine, after the, the period is over, she's unclean for another seven days. So for 12 long years, she never felt the touch of any human being. No one touched her. No one came close to her. Can you imagine your life? No one has touched you for 12 long years. All, they all stay away from you. In fact, they curse you because, you know what, you know, accidentally if you go touch anyone, that person is unclean and their entire job or work is hampered because you touch them accidentally. This was her life, you know, for 12 long years and she tried several medications. She went to several doctors and nothing happened. And here she's in the lowest moment of her life. I mean, she has lost all her power. She has lost all her money. She has lost a lot of blood. And she's, she has come to her wit's end. And this is what happened. You know, she can't go ask for help. And definitely she can't, cannot go into the crowd. And in fact, you know what, that day if Jesus did not heal her, you know, that was doomsday. Because the entire crowd would have been unclean because of her. And they would have stoned her to death. That would have been the last day in her life. This is what she did. The Bible says, you know what? She went behind. She went behind. And then she touched the hem of his garment without the knowledge of Jesus. And she took the power of God. Jesus turns back and asks this question. Who touched my garment? Who touched me? Because I could see, I can feel the power, you know, go from my body. In other words, you know what? Without Jesus giving the power... Without Jesus performing the miracle, she took it. What do you call when someone takes something without your permission? I call it stealing. I call it stealing. That's what I say. You know what? She had a faith to steal her miracle. Many times, church, please understand, you know, certain things stop us. Certain conditions stop us. Certain conditions limit us. But can we go beyond for instance, you know what, you know, our churches have a particular time. Your service ends, you know, it starts and ends in a particular time. But after that, can I get healed? Yes, you can. You can go past, you know what, there is a, please understand church, you know, we can just take and suck and usurp the power of God. This woman, that's what she did. Amen. By her faith, she took away the healing without the permission of Jesus. There's an old Negro spiritual. It's called steal away. Steal away, steal away, steal away home, steal away to Jesus. These black Negro slaves, they were working and under these white, you know, people. And these, these are you know, the certain facts Sometimes, you know, we don't, we want to hush certain facts. A few years, few years ago, I, when I was in the U.S., I visited a particular museum, and there I saw a slave Bible. A Bible, it's called a slave Bible. And you don't have the book of Exodus there. You don't have the book of Philemon there. Because it talks about, you know, slaves' liberty. And this is, even today, you can check and you can find out, slave Bible. These slaves would stay in the outhouse, in the outhouse. And these landlords, these, these white landlords, they will go to bed early. After a long, laborious day, all these slaves will quietly go to a barn 
and praise God and pray. That's when they composed the song, Steal Away, Steal Away to Jesus, Steal Away Home. They were beaten so badly, but yet, you know what, their hearts were liberated. And they, this, please understand, they didn't, they didn't have the right or the liberty to go praise God, you know, in, in the open. But they stealthily, they went and they sought the face of God. And this woman, she didn't have the right to go and say, Jesus, heal me. She didn't have the right. See, there was another person who was a leper. The Bible says he came and knelt before Jesus. She was a woman. Please, and that's why I said, I started the story saying she was a woman. As a leper, he's again ostracized. He can, he's unclean. But as a man, he was able to come and kneel before Jesus. But this woman, she stealthily came behind and usurped, she stole the healing. And if something should stop you, I, I would encourage you to steal your miracle today. Just go. You don't have to tell anyone. You don't have to wait for anyone. You don't, want to, you don't have to get anyone's permission. Just go stealthily to the presence of God and take your miracle today. today. Amen. Hallelujah. Usurping faith. Fourthly, amen. Adam and faith. Adam and faith. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 to 28. Matthew 20, 15, 21 to 28. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. And he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, True, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great, o is, woman, your great is your faith. Faith, amen, amen, amen. Another example about faith. Let me briefly mention about it. This is a situation where Jesus and his disciples are going to, you know, on a holiday. They go, they're going to a region called Tyre and Sidon. And, and uh, you see that on, 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 the, on that way, uh, a woman comes and asks, begs for help. Now, the first response of Jesus was he ignored her. She was ignored. She was ignored. You know, when you read the story, you see that, you know, so much so the disciples are embarrassed because people are watching and she's asking, she's yelling, she's crying, she's begging, she's cringing. And Jesus just ignores ignores and he walks on and disciples say, say please say something and send her away it's embarrassing you can see i can see the all are watching and please do something number one she never gets upset even though she was ignored today i see a lot of people in the church my goodness if they are not wish if they are not greeted one week the next week they are gone they say hey, you know what no one notices me no one sees me Church, can you just ignore, you know, you being ignored? She never got upset. Though she was ignored, she never got upset. Then you see that, you know what? Jesus denied her. Jesus said, no, 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 no. You know what? I was sent to the people of Israel. I was not sent to Gentiles. You know, I'm, I don't want to do it, anything to the Gentiles. I was sent. So literally, Jesus denied. First, Jesus ignored she didn't get upset. Secondly, Jesus said, no. No, no. I'm, I want to only minister to the Jewish people and not to the Gentiles. He denied. He denied. Guess what? She ignored that. And the Bible says, now she comes and kneels before Jesus. So much so, it stops Jesus. Jesus can't go anymore. And now Jesus insults her. Calls her a dog. Calls her a dog. You know what she does? She ignores this. And says, yes, Lord, I'm the dog. It's okay. Call me a dog. I don't care. But dogs eat the crumbs from the table. Give me the crumbs. 
I know my daughter will be healed. Amen. This is what I call an adamant faith. Adamant faith. We need such, such kind of faith today. Because I know that people get upset. If they are ignored, they get upset. If they are denied, they get upset. If they are not in a given a prominence, they get upset. This woman was igno ignored. She was denied. She was insulted in public. She was, insulted. she was called a dog in public. But she was adamant. You know what? Today, I am going to receive the healing for my daughter. I don't care. Come what may. Church, we need this adamant faith. Because sometimes the enemy comes and upsets and say, you know what, they didn't treat you well. They come and say, you know what, you know, you, know, you were ignored. So another person is giving important, importance and you're not. And we just ignore those things and say, you know what, I've decided to get the touch of God today. Amen, 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 hallelujah, amen. I pray that these examples will build your faith, build your faith. Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Mark 16, 14. Later, Jesus appeared to the leaven as they were eating. Now, this is after the resurrection. Here are people, the disciples of Jesus, seeing, knowing that Jesus is resurrected from the dead. They are eating, they are having a meal. And here Jesus says, he rebuked them for the lack of faith and the stubborn refusal to believe. Amen. Those who have seen him after his resurrection. This is the condition of the church today. Having so many, so many, heard so many messages. You know, you have so many examples of the power of God, but still, you adamantly refuse to have faith. We need to adamantly have faith. We need to steal by our faith. We need to have an amazing faith. We need to have an obvious faith. Church, Especially in this end times, that's what we read in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? Shall we close our eyes and pray? My friend, what is your need? It's so simple. Believe and speak. That's what faith is all about. For a miracle to take place, again, it's simple. Your faith, our faith should meet the power of God. The miracle will take place. The power of God is ready right now. As you hear the word, this, these words are there to build your faith. If your faith should meet the power of God, today you will receive your miracle. Amen. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. I pray that through these examples that you would also learn to have this kind of faith and receive your miracle. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you because your word is still alive. Your, your word is a living word, Lord. And I pray that this living word will give life to people. If there's anyone, Lord, who needs your touch, and I pray that, Lord, as they hear this, these words, let their faith be built up, and I pray, Father, that right now they will receive the miracle, Father, in their life, the miracle they need physically, emotionally, relationally, spiritually. I pray that you would, Lord, grant them their miracle, Lord. Thank you, Father. I pray that, Lord, help us to receive this word and share this word to others. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen.